Hey guys, welcome back to another code.org app lab tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at how to create a simple timer. And uh, don't let the code over here stress you because it can actually be a lot simpler than this. Um, however, um, if you, all you're after is how many seconds have passed since uh, this has started, then this will be very easy to do. So let's get into this. Uh, I'm going to create a new project actually. So I'm going to make an app lab app. And it's actually opening up my timer again for some reason. Okay. Let's try that again. Make an app lab app. It's going to give me a new project this time. And it's opening my timer again. Okay, let's try to create a new button here. Okay, this looks like it's promising, untitled project. Right, so uh, how do we create a timer? First off, let's create a text area for our time. So we create this text time. And uh, time elapse is the message for uh, what we're going to see on the screen here. And in our code, uh, we are going to create a timed uh, function. So uh, where was that again? Might be under mathematics controls. Yes, okay. So we're gonna create something called a timed loop. And 1,000 is actually 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So every one second, we are going to create a variable called x, started with zero. And every time we do that, we're going to increase x by one. So we're going to go to our math function and increase x by one. And we're going to show that on set, 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 set text two. X. Okay, let's see this in action. There you go. Okay, so it's counting up every one second. Okay. If you want to count, uh, if you want to increase faster, we can do this every one millisecond. Okay, that seems to be, uh, doesn't quite seem to be one millisecond, but uh, yeah, that's, that's roughly what we're looking at, okay? But usually, we probably just need to count up in seconds. 1,000, okay, so every second increases by one. Okay, now of course you can do this, um, you can activate this a little bit later on, which means you don't always have to, um, I suppose we had a different screen. So let's say we have screen two, click design, we can do screen, screen two, so let's say we want this to happen in screen two over screen one. So I'm going to go back to screen one. And uh, under design, I'm going to remove this guy actually this time. Drag that off. And I'll make a button that goes to screen two. Let's have a code for that very quickly on event. On button one, we're going to go to screen number two. Let's try that out. So it's the next class. Okay, so to set text, text time doesn't exist. Let's set that up. Screen two, text time. Oh, that's sort of the ID. Uh, this guy is text time. Let's run that. Okay, I'm going to wait a few seconds, go to screen two. Now, we might notice that that didn't start counting from zero. That didn't start counting as soon as we hit the button. So what can we do We do to, to remedy that? So let's just see that one more time. So if it run, I'm just going to count up one second, two, three, four, five. Okay, click on screen two. Right, so that's actually counting as soon as the app starts. 
what we could do is we can actually just reset the variable of x when we go to screen two. So let's try that again. Reset and run. Okay, so we're at one, two, three, four, five, hit screen two. Okay, so you can see that it, it has reset itself. So even though we saw six right away, um, it does reset the value uh, as soon as we get there. So um, that's, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. That concludes the timer tutorial.